Good morning, folks. Hope you're all doing well out there. Rosa and I are back out in the market garden. The place is filling up really quickly. We've got a lot out in the beds over the last few days. We've had some horrible weather. It's very cold and it's been very wet. Um, but we've been trying our best to get out and work in the garden during some drier spells. The garden is starting to fill up. We've got a lot of beds. Oh, look at that cat. Just doing what I hate him doing. My nemesis. Morris. Oh, God. Nothing, just the cat. So, yeah, we've got um, a lot of things seeded. There's some salads have been seeded underneath that um, fleece that Morris is rolling around on. Morris. Fight. Come on. Anyway, yeah, we've got a lot out in the garden now. Um, a lot of the plots, nearly all the plots are full. So we really want to do a market garden catch up vlog for you guys. We'll be doing that quite soon, um, especially for our CSA members to give you a tour around the market garden, see what's growing and see what hopefully coming quite soon will be in the veg boxes. But we'll do that another time. Today is another day for some market garden work. We're going to be doing a bit of weeding. We're going to be hopefully getting a couple more uh, beetroot beds prepped and ready to transplant into. That's so Rosa at the moment is just bringing out some of our young vegetable starts to harden off. Bit of a cold day for it, um, but they should be fine. Um, we'll be bringing a lot of compost up. We've been adding lots of compost to our beds. I know in previous vlogs I've talked about how hard it was to um, source compost um, but that was for doing uh, the sort of Charles Dowding approach of adding um, a good thick layer of compost to each bed. We are making a lot of our own compost which we're adding to our beds as thickly as possible and actually it's turning out pretty good. We're very pleased with the compost that we made from um, in our chicken system now chicken composting system from the goat buyer, from the goat bedding. We're adding a lot of that to the beds, really making an effort to do that, really reducing the use of the BCS and tiller this year, doing a lot of prep by hand, using the broad fork and rake. Um, so very excited to see the results in reducing the tillage. Old fleece is really good board rubber. Uh -huh. Who knew? We probably have a lot more fleece than we need board rubbers. But. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Rosa is just updating the list. <laughs> the list isn't too bad, actually. We've actually, we're a bit on it. Yeah. But yeah, we should really get the beets in the ground. Kay. I'm looking at them and I think that because the germination isn't great, I wonder whether they're only going to make a, one bed. Okay. Um, What's I don't know there? why the germination has been so bad this year. I've sown another round of choggia beetroot and that's going to be for the fi what I thought was the final bed but I might sow another round of that um, because ideally we want five beds of beetroot. Um, we've got two planted and what I thought was enough uh, seedlings for another two but looking at them they've just not done very well. Um, so uh, they probably will only be, there will only be enough in those six trays for one bed, almost. Um, so yes, so just got to do a little bit more sowing, but that's okay. Some crops do worse some years than others. Um, and that's just down to the variation in the, in the uh, climate in different years, I think. Um, and the seed, maybe. Um, I mean, it's all new seed, mm. but I don't know. Um, we've never tried golden beetroot before um, and they're quite weird looking. I don't know if these ones are behaving badly or if this is what they're really meant to look like, but they're very small crinkly leaves and they've not germinated very well. So um, mm. we'll just have to see how they grow. Sometimes they really get better once you've planted them. They may not have germinated very well, they may look unhealthy, but once you've planted them out and looked after them a bit, they turn into great vegetables. So. We've just got to hope that that will happen. With a lot of new varieties, there's always a bit of a worry that it won't work at all. I have read that crinkly leaves can be a calcium deficiency, but I'm not sure in such young plants as these just germinating. So let us know, folks. Ever grown golden beetroot and they've germinated with crinkly leaves? So the polytunnel is lovely and warm. We kind of just want to hang out in here all day. 
um, but as you saw in one of our previous vlogs, I think two vlogs back, we did a lot of work which meant we got the place pretty much planted up now. The courgettes are doing incredibly well. I think this is the fastest we've ever had fruit. We've already been eating um, courgettes. Rosa did some really beautiful stuffed courgette flowers with our homemade goat's cheese uh, the other night. We've been having baby courgettes for the last week or so, um, but here we are. We've got some um, good sized ones now. That's kind of what we're looking for is starting to get to a good size of courgette. So by the time the veg boxes roll in, we should have courgettes in the first box. Um, so they're doing really well. Um, like I said, we're way overdue to bring you a market garden update video. So I'm not gonna go too much into how good things are doing right now. Cause I wanna save that for that video. But yeah, everything's looking really nice and green and healthy. So we're gonna go up and have a look at these next couple of beet beds that need prepped composted and planted. Um, should we go do that? Yes. Okay, we're up at the uh, root rotation. We've got our beetroot and our carrots up here. Uh, this year. Last year we had um, brassicas in this plot. You can see the beds of carrots behind me. We've got two which have germinated a little bit disappointingly as I've said in a previous vlog. We had the seven row carrots which really patchy germination and the five row which is so-so. Not as great as we'd like it. Um, but these were our first sowings of carrots and they always seem to be a bit patchy I think as the weather is just the temperature fluctuations, as we were seeing earlier, have been so random this year. For Scotland, extreme highs of temperature and, and like today, very cold, even though we're verging on midsummer. Um, and I think that does affect the germination. Anyway, but we've underneath the fleece here, we've got more beds of carrots, right up to this one, which I just sowed a couple of days ago, which we need to get a fleece on. Um, and then we've got a couple more beds for beetroot, we've probably only got enough germinated right now for one more bed. We've, we've got a couple of beds of beetroot down in another plot. So here are a couple of beet beds I prepared earlier. This is a bed of beetroot that we transplanted last month. Uh, they weren't the best of uh, seedlings, but are really perking up now, which is great to see. And then I transplanted this uh, just a couple of days ago in the pouring rain. And um, you can see our application of compost. So I've discovered that actually putting the compost on and giving it a roll with just a lawn roller that we borrowed from our uh, volunteer Mark. Uh, thank you, Mark. This roller has come in very useful for other aspects of the farm that we didn't think it would. Um, so putting on a lumpy, bumpy compost as our, our composts are very rough, quite coarse still at the moment. A lot of woody materials are still present in the compost and we, we apply it quite thickly and I've found that rolling it after application uh, I'm hoping is going to be helpful. It makes it easier to transplant into quickly when you haven't got large lumps of compost to try and maneuver around to um, make your holes for transplanting into. And then on harvest days, it might make it a lot easier if we were to leave kind of undulating l lumps and bumps of compost. Um, it might make cutting greens and things a bit difficult uh, without cutting into the compost and then potentially making the, uh, the, the product um, a bit muddy from the compost. Um, with the beetroot that's not so important but if we were doing cut and come again greens where we're cutting quite regularly and wanting to get a level cut um, just to roll to roll the compost down slightly it's not a, a heavy weight that we're putting on it's um, as a grass roller without actually any water in the barrel. Anyway just as a test it seems to be doing quite well applying the compost rolling it. So this is what the bed of beets up above us is going to look like hopefully by the end of today. Um, three rows of beetroot set out at about three or four inches spacing. So in a previous vlog I told you the sad news, the fact that we don't have a goose sitting on eggs anymore. 
Uh, somehow the eggs got cracked open and eaten. We're not sure who did it. Uh, the geese aren't laying anymore, so I think that uh, was our last chance of uh, having goslings hatched on the farm this year. But, some good news, we've got a broody hen, and so she's in our broody house that we have here in our, uh, in our chicken run composting area. Next to the hen house, we've got this old chicken coop, which was one of our very first hen houses. And we use this now when we have a broody hen, just to isolate her and put her in there. Uh, to sit on the eggs, and so she's in there right now. We'll just take a wee peek. So she's in there. So I think she's been in there about a week now. So I guess towards the end of the month, we should be quite close to seeing if the eggs um, have been fertilized. I think she's sitting on around six eggs. And so that'll be good because quite a few of these girls are getting to a bit of a grand old age um, especially there's a black rock who's in the original black rocks the one sitting in the middle there she is one of the original black rocks uh, which we got as um, pullets in 2016 in the first year of the veg box business so i don't think she's laying anymore um, the two on either side of her, we can't really class as black rocks, but uh, they, her, their mother was a black rock, um, so they're relatively young. But even the high lines now, the orange ones, the high lines, they're, um, they're about two years old now. So we'll be slowing down on the lay. Uh, part of our income is generated through egg sales. So it's important to us that we do have hens that are pulling their weight and, and laying quite regularly. So to have... Uh, new stock coming in uh, is important of course we could just buy new hens um, we may still do that but considering we've got a hen going broody and offering to uh, hatch out some eggs for us we might as well let her do that and uh, rejuvenate our home flock that way so while i'm here this is obviously in the chicken run is where we uh, accumulate our compost and you can see we fairly got through it uh, in October I think it was we piled this very high and it's composted down and we've used a, a large amount already in the garden um, but we've still got a lot there this was actually quite a depression that we made before filling it and the material the material I'm actually standing on is, is compost as well so we can dig this out so there's, there's still a lot um, of material left here that we can use it's proving to be really great as we dig down deeper we've got quite a, a rich moist compost and the top layer with the chicken scratching around in it is more uh, mulchy uh, and, and looser and powdery so we can use that as a surface side dressing mulch um, which we've done with the beetroots, we'll, we give them some compost to begin with and then a few weeks later we mulch with this mulchy compost um, which is quite easy to apply around the young plants because of the way the chickens have shredded it up for us. Uh, so really great system, really great but we often think of ways of improving it and potentially changing it but that's just what we do here, we're always and I'm sure a lot of you are at home with your own homesteads and gardens are very similar. Uh, always looking at ways to improve stuff or um, make a system better on the farm for functionality uh, and productivity. So, we'll go get a couple of wheelbarrows and we'll start hefting that up to the beet bed. Oh. Why are you in there? <laughs>
Great, that's the compost applied to this beet bed. Compost is made up of a really great variety of different materials. Straw, goat manure, chicken manure, wood chip, very diverse mulchy compost we've put on. We've been just taking the time to break it all up with our hands because some of it's quite lumpy. It gives you a great chance just to have a look and see what your compost is like um, when you spend that much time with it. Now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go and get the grass roller, the lawn roller, and just roll it down very lightly. We're not compacting the soil much by doing that. And like I said before, that just gives us a very even surface to transplant into quickly and put some string lines down to transplant quickly. <laughs> That's the bed rolled, um, so perfect for transplanting into now. We're going to go break off for a cup of tea and get back to this. Oh, the sun's coming out, that's nice, after days of rain. So this bed still has the roots from the previous crop, actually from last year, um, a winter cabbage crop. So we just left the roots in the ground and as we transplant we'll just make sure we miss uh, the rows of cabbages. We'll get around to tidying up that tarp. There's two beds left above this bed of beets that we've been preparing. Because of the slightly bad germination rate of the beets, we're not sure what's going to go in those beds just now. So we'll just tidy it up, put the tarps back on, and keep the soil safe from uh, the rain and the wind, and stop the weeds from growing. Right, we need to get some string and some pegs to put in the ground to mark out our rows for the beetroot. Can't use the technique with the bed prep rake and the blue water pipe tubes on the tines this time around because of the compost we've put on. It doesn't really work so well. You can kind of try it, but we've discovered it's best to do it the way I'm about to do it. So we've got this, we've got a lot of this electric uh, wire left over from the cows and so some of it is in kind of annoyingly short lengths but this length is great for uh, using on our 50 meter length beds so did that measuring tape just to be accurate and need some little bits of bamboo being a right little pain today. Come here. Come on. Off you get. Go on. No. Oh. Come here. Come here. Ah. Alright, got in a bit of a tangle there and made even worse by having a very playful cat following my tangled mess of cord as I was trying to get it set out on this bed. And I didn't have quite enough. So we've got two rows marked out. So we'll get those put in first and then swap the string over for the third row. Rose is just bringing up the transplants.
Okie doke, I think that's us pretty much done this bed of beads. So it's great to get them in the ground. Um, one more bed to go? Yeah, go One more beads. bed to go. We hope they're going to make a whole bed, but if not, we've got some chard we're going to finish off the bed with. We've got to go out and get some animal feed. We're going to pick yeah. up some barley from our friends and neighbours across the way. Yep. I think it's lunchtime. I think so, yeah. Surprisingly hot again. Just I started know. the day off complaining about the cold weather. I know. <laughs> and now, now it's quite warm. <laughs>